So when we make a GET request to get a certain resource, for example, posts, then JSON server returns us a data set, all of these things right here in a specific order. And that default order is based on the ID property. So we see the ID of one first and then the ID of three last. It goes in order. And that's why we see over here the ID of one, two and three. That's the default order that we get data back in. Now, sometimes we might want to order things differently. So we can do this by tacking on some extra parts to the endpoint right here that we send a request to. And we use query parameters to do that. So what I'm going to do over here is add on a question mark, first of all, and then a property called underscore sort. And this is going to be a sorting order. Now, remember, I said the default sorting order is by ID, but you can tell JSON server to sort the data that it gets by any of these different properties. So, for example, I could sort it by likes instead. So if I say sort is equal to likes, which is the property name, I'm going to save that and preview again. This time we get it in a different order. This is going to be the lowest likes, 15, then 20 and then 30. So the default order is to go from the lowest to the highest. That was a bit like ID. It goes from one until the highest number. If we want to reverse this to show the blog with the most likes at the top, we can just say and to tack on another parameter and it's going to be underscore order and we can set that equal to descending DESC. So if I save this now, and preview, we can see now the one with the most likes is at the top and the one with the least amount of likes is at the bottom. Pretty simple, right? So we can just tack on these different parts to the query parameters. So we have underscore sort to say what property we want to sort by and underscore order to say whether it should be ascending, which is the default value or descending. Now we can sort by any property that we like. If we do it on a string, it's going to sort them alphabetically but I think it makes sense in our case to sort it by likes so that the most liked is at the top. So next up I want to add new posts to the database file over here by going to the add a new blog page, the create page, adding in a blog title, a blog body, and then clicking this thing right here. So in order to do this, we need to send a post request to the JSON server. So let's go now, first of all, to create.js. And what I'd like to do is get a handle of this form right here. So we'll use the query selector to do that. I'm just going to paste this in. So query selector, and we're grabbing the form on this page and storing it in this constant right here. The next thing we want to do is attach an event listener to this form and that event is going to be the submit event. So let me paste this in. We take the form, add event listener, submit event and we're calling a function right here called create post. Now this time around we are not putting this inside an anonymous function and that's because I do want to take in the event object as an argument automatically into this function. So let's create the function const and then create post and we're going to set that equal to an async function we take in the event object this time that we automatically get when we invoke this function and then the first thing we want to do is prevent the default action now the default action when we click on this is that the page reloads i don't want that so i'm going to say e.prevent default in order to do this so now if i save this and come over here and click on create it's not going to refresh the page all right so that's why i wanted the event object inside this function secondly i want to create an object which is going to represent the new record or document that we're essentially going to save to this post resource so an object which looks a bit like this so let me do that by saying const and i'm going to call it doc for document but you can call it what you will and set this equal to an object now the title is going to be whatever a user types in this field and the body is whatever they type in this field. Now we can access those by using these name attributes right here. I gave the input a name of title and the text area a name of body. So we take the form, which we already have a handle on, and then we say whatever the name attribute is. So in our case, title. So dot title, and that gets us that input field. Then we want the value of that input field. And we're going to do the same for the body. So that is going to be the form dot body. 
and then the value of that. Now we also, oops, it shouldn't be value of, just value. We also want likes and we're going to start off each new record or document as zero likes. We don't add an ID and the reason for that is that JSON server is automatically going to add an ID to it that's not already been taken so it will apply an ID of four, the next ID available. So we have the document, now we want to make a request, a post request to a specific endpoint and the endpoint to make a post request to a resource is just forward slash the resource. So let me say here await and then we're going to use a fetch request and this is going to go to this endpoint right here. So let me copy that and paste it in. And this time we need to pass in a second argument which is an object because it's in here that we say the method of the type of request. So this is going to be a post request, meaning we're sending data. Now we need to apply a body property, which is going to be the data we send. Now we can't just send a JavaScript object. That's not the way it works. We can't send that between server and clients. We have to pass a JSON string. So we can say in JavaScript, JSON.stringify, and then pass in an object, which is going to be the doc, to turn this into JSON. And that is the data we're going to send, okay? So it's gonna send this to this endpoint. JSON server is gonna look at this and say, okay, I'm gonna add this new document that you have in JSON format into this post resource. So after that, what do I want to do once this is complete? Well, I want to relocate that user back to the home page once it's been saved. So I'll take the window object, then say dot location, then dot replace, and then the URL I want to go to, which is just forward slash, or it could be forward slash index.html, it doesn't really matter. And that is going to go to the home page once this is done. Okay, so let's give this a whirl. I'm going to now add in a new blog title. I'll just say Mario Kart Live Review. I've not got this yet, but I do want it. And I'm going to copy all of this stuff right here and paste it in and create. And now we go back to all blogs. There is some kind of error, I think. Let's take a look at what that is. It says cannot read property slice of undefined. So I might have made some kind of error. So title, body, likes. Let me take a look in the database file. If I go down, we can see it has an ID of four, but nothing else. So something is going wrong. Okay, and I think it's because I've not added on the headers property right here. We have to say headers and the content type to say that we're sending JSON. So make sure you have this on. Then I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna go back to the database file and delete that record save it and then go back over here go to add new blog and we'll say mario kart live review again let me copy all this ninja ipsum a second time paste it in create cool and now it's working so we just needed to say over here when we make that post request the headers and the content type totally forgot about that schoolboy error okay so that, my friends, is how we send a post request to this endpoint that JSON server gives us to add new data to the database file. And we can see that right here. And it takes up the next available ID. Next, I'm going to show you how to delete items from the data. So currently, if we click on read more, we see all the details for that particular blog. What I'd like to do is add a delete button at the bottom and when we click that we send a delete request to an endpoint provided by JSON server for that resource and that particular item to delete it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a button to the details HTML page and if we go down here I'll create that at the bottom. So button and then I'll just say delete like so. And what I want to do is give this a class of button. Now we need to get a handle of this inside the JavaScript file and attach an event listener to it. So let me go to details.js and I'm going to paste this in. So I've called this constant delete button and we've used query selector to get the delete class, which is that button right there. So now we need to add an event listener to this. I'll grab the delete button, say dot add event listener, and we want to add a click event listener to it. Now this callback function is going to be 
in line. So I'm just going to define it here instead of creating a new one like we did with render details, but it is going to be asynchronous like so. So let me say async. We're going to take in the event object. I don't think we'll use it, but let's take it in anyway. And then inside here, we want to send a fetch request to delete this particular post. Now to do that, we need to send the request to forward slash posts forward slash the ID of whatever post we want to delete. Now we have that ID right here. Remember we grabbed it before when we said new URL search params and passed in this thing right here and then said get the ID. So I have access to this ID and I can just say const response is equal to await and then fetch. And inside here, first of all, let's paste in this thing. So let me grab this and copy it and paste that in. Then it's going to be forward slash plus the ID that we have for this particular post. Remember, that's right here, okay? So now we're sending a request to this endpoint, but we also need to pass in a second argument, which is that object to say the method is gonna be delete, and that's all there is to it. That is gonna send a delete request to this endpoint. JSON server is gonna look at that, and it's gonna find the post with that ID right here and remove it from this file. So after I've done that, what I'm going to do is relocate the user to the home page because then if we delete it, well, this post no longer exists. So we should redirect them to the home page. So to do that, I'll take the window object. Then I'm going to say location and then dot replace. And then we're going to go to just forward slash. It could be forward slash index.html as well. It doesn't matter any of those two and that is gonna redirect us. So fingers crossed, this all should work. And you can see right now this doesn't exist, but what I'm gonna do is, let me just check this is all correct. I'm going to go to one of these posts. Okay, we don't see all of the data. Something has gone wrong, let me see here. Right, and I figured it out. It was because I gave this a class of button, not delete which was stupid of me. So now we're grabbing, remember, the delete class and we're attaching the event listener to that. Okay, so now, fingers crossed, hopefully this will work. Okay, so if we click on delete, this is new view course coming soon. Delete it, it redirects us to the homepage and now we can't see that blog. Awesome. Let's try another one. Let's go to Mario Kart live review, delete that. Awesome, this is working. And let's just check our db.json file. Yep those two blogs have gone. Okay, so finally, I want to show you how to do a text search. So imagine now we had a search bar at the top over here and a user can search our blog for a term. How can we then send a request to the JSON server to send us all posts which contain this search term? Well, first of all, let's create that search form. Go to the index page over here and what we'll do is create it underneath the nav. So let's create a form and get rid of the action. But I will give this a class of search, like so. And inside this form, I'm going to do an input and it's type text, but I want to give this a name attribute so we can grab it easily later. And that is going to be term. We'll also give this a placeholder and set that equal to search term. Okay, so now, if a user enters into this and presses enter, then it's going to submit the form. That fires a submit event on this form. So first of all, we need to grab this form from this index file, and then we need to add an event listener to that, which is going to listen for the submit event. And in that submit event handler, we need to query the data for that particular term. So let's first of all get a reference to the search form and that is the search class right here, okay? So we have that, and then down here, I'm gonna attach an event listener to that. So I will say search form dot add event listener. It's gonna be a submit event, and then this is gonna fire a function, and I'm gonna take in the event object, and inside this function, I'm gonna first of all say e.prevent default, so that it doesn't refresh the page. And then underneath that, I want to grab the data that contains that search term, right? And then when I have that data, I want to output it the same way as we do here. So we get all of those posts and we cycle through them and create a template for each one of them. So what I really want to do is 
actually run this function again, but slightly alter this when we submit this search form. So I'm going to say render posts like this, right? But I'm going to pass in an argument right here. And that argument is going to be the search term. Now to get that search term, we can say search form dot and then it was term that was the name attribute remember right here and then we want the value so dot value like so so we're passing in that text value whatever the user types and in fact we'll trim it so we'll say dot trim to remove any white space so we're passing that in now and we have that right here now when we fire this function we're not always going to have this term sometimes it's not going to be defined because when the page first loads and we call render posts we're not passing in a search term then we just want all of the posts and in that case this is going to be undefined so we want to check does this term have a value if it does have a value let's append something to this so that we can search the data for that term so I'm going to do a simple if check right now. I'm going to come under this and say if and then term, then we'll do something. So if this is undefined, then whatever is inside this block won't fire. If it has a value, if we pass something in, then it will fire. And at that point, I'm going to take the URI and I'm going to plus equal something to it. So add something to the end. Now, the way we search for something is by using the Q parameter or the Q key. So I'm going to say, and first of all, because we're adding on another query parameter like we do here, and then we say Q, and then we set it equal to the search term. So I'm going to output that using a template string. So let's delete the normal quotes and replace this with a template string quote. And we're going to output the term. So let me paste that in. And now if we have a term, we're just appending this Q equals the term to the end of it. And what's going to happen is JSON server is going to see that and it's going to look through all of our posts, all of the content, the title and the body for that search term. If it is there inside the title or the body, then it's going to add that document to the array that it eventually returns to us, the data set. If it's not, then it's not going to add it to it. So we only then get back the items that have that term inside them. So let's give this a whirl. And remember, if there's no term when we first load the page, this is not going to fire and we're just sticking with this. So let's save it and let's give this a whirl. I'm going to just say blog because I can see that that's right here. And I think it's the only instance of blog. So let me press enter. And now we can see we just get back this one result. If I delete this and press enter, now there's no search term. And so we get back all of them. Let me look for something else. I'm going to say... Is there a word that is in both of them? So two, we'll do two. Now this might return more than just these two. And it does because inside the body, it probably says two. I tell you what, let's say net, press enter. And this time we get back this one, okay? So that is how we search our data using JSON server. So hopefully now you can see how easy it is to set up a local JSON server for testing, prototyping, and learning. Now I use this a lot in my projects and tutorials sometimes because it's just really easy to set up and run with. Definitely check out the docs if you wanna find out more about how to use advanced features such as pagination and data relationships. And that link is gonna be down below in the description. So then my friends, I really, really hope you've enjoyed this series. And if you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot and it helps out an enormous amount. And if you do want to join the cause and support the channel, you can do by clicking the join button on the channel homepage or underneath the video right down below. You also get a little cool ninja badge next to your name in the comments for that. And it's 99 pence or cents per month. And I've also created several premium in-depth courses on Udemy. So the first one is Modern JavaScript. The second one is D3 and Firebase. And the third one is Vue.js and Firebase. So if you want to take one of those, all the links with the discounts automatically applied to them are going to be in the video description down below. So again, thanks so much for watching. And I'm going to see you in the very next course.